Hi guys, Squall here. Welcome to another Microsoft Flight Simulator video. This time I thought we'd take a look at a few things. Number one, uh, the ground services, as in how do they work? How does the pushback thing work? How does the fuel truck work? Catering? All that kind of stuff. Uh, I also thought we'd look at it in the commercial aircraft, the big airliners like this one, the, a the Airbus. And I thought we'd also look at it in something a bit more GA. I was thinking about maybe a very light aircraft, but I thought I'll probably go for the Citation and see how it works with that and just see what's available. Also, uh, I want to look at how ATC handles taxiing in and taxiing out of the airfield, and I'll show you a little tip so that you don't get lost when you're actually doing that. So first of all, uh, let's get started. Let's have a look at how this works. So you can see all the ground crew is actually assembled around the airport. Don't worry about this guy. This is a obviously a preview build bug right here i'm sure it'll be fixed um the only way to communicate with atc is via the radio and if you actually try and do it while the aircraft is completely cold and dark you won't be able to so if i go up to here and choose this thing you can see the electrical system must be turned on or on to use a radio and speak to atc so right now this thing is completely cold and dark so i can't actually talk to anybody so what i've got to do is jump in the aircraft and I think there's a little bug at the moment because uh, the external power is actually available uh, even though the electrical truck is not connected. So we're just going to ignore that and assume that that's not actually a thing that should be happening. And instead what we'll do is we'll put the two batteries on which will give us basic uh, avionics. And now we should be able to click on the ATC and tune into this one which is ground services. So the first thing we're going to do is request a power supply truck. And Orlando we'll ground 9555, could you please send a ground power unit? 9555, a ground power unit is on the road. I don't know if you noticed, but I set my uh, tail number to November Sierra Quebec Romeo Lima. And I also put my call sound to nutty and my flight number to 555. So the ATC is calling me Nutty555, which I find amusing. You might not, but you can choose it to whatever you want. Anyway, so this is the, the, the ground power truck coming in. Now, personally, I don't think this should happen unless you request it. Um, and then, you know, once this is done, then ground power should now be available in here. And you can click on that and you no longer drain your batteries, which is how it should be. Uh, I assume that will get fixed. So that's the, that's the first one. That's the, the ground uh, power unit. Now, the next one you want to probably pull in is the fuel truck. And the reason I say that is because the fuel truck takes a while to get here, especially here at Orlando. If I request fuel supply... Orlando ground, Nutty 555, could you please send a fuel truck? Nutty 555, a fuel truck is on the road. Now, it doesn't actually tell you where he is. And, you know... Orlando's a big place, and if you actually look around here, um, you just won't see him. He's just not here. And I think, it, it, I guess he spawns somewhere on the other side of the airfield and kind of drives over here. I'm guessing, actually, that's him right there. You see? So he's probably based around here and is now currently driving all the way over here. So while he does that, we'll do something else, all right? Because it'll take a while to get here. So what we'll do is, actually, let's do this from the external camera. And then, just get myself back in here. We'll do it from this camera, and then what you can do is see them in action. Uh, first of all, we can, we've got the jetway, so we can, we've can we got a jetway here, and of course we're in the Airbus, so we should be able to use it. So we'll do jetway connection. Orlando ground, 9555, could you please connect the jetway to the aircraft? 9555, the jetway is going to be connected. Now, I have noticed that, um, for example, if you look at where the pushback truck is, at the moment there's a little bit of collision going on, like that, but I'm sure that will get sorted out. But this is not bad. I mean, considering this is built into the actual game, this is pretty good, right? This is the kind of thing that you used to pay, you know, buy payware for as getting as an add-on. This is, like, built into the thing. I notice there's no option to get the air stairs at the moment, so there's, I can't do anything about the um, boarding at the rear door. But that actually works, and if I dive into the cockpit, you'll see. Um, it is connected, but, you know, you don't see the door removed. You just kind of see this going on. God, there's supposed to be a noise going off in the cockpit. 
yeah, there was like a door symbol going off, door warning, so that's fine. Um, but it works. We we have a working jetway. And it look, doesn't it look fantastic? I can't get over the rendering in this game. It looks so darn good. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to request the catering service. Orlando ground 9555. Could you please send the catering truck? And you'll see what happens. It actually opens up the rear door for you. The catering truck is on um, the now, you know, remember back to my sort of P3D days and GSX and that kind of thing. What would happen is you'd request from GSX to push the, the catering truck to turn up. And then you would have to go into the cockpit and open the doors because you are pilot in command. So it shouldn't be opening doors for you. I'm, I'm guessing that's going to be a feature that will be implemented at some point. Um, just wondering where my fuel truck is. There he is. <laughs> he's, he's like, he's halfway here. Um, yeah, request that boy early because he does take his time. Anyway, let's uh, let's see what this guy does. Now, annoyingly, I can't see any... Like, with GSX and stuff, if I remember, you get little bits of trolleys and stuff coming out of here. Um, I don't think that happens on this one. I think all that happens is the doors open. And it kind of magically just teleports in stuff inside your aircraft. So that's not, you know, fully featured, shall we say, yet. You can actually go inside and walk around. Look at this. Exit door is open. Not open, exit. It's a bit low texture, but you're not really meant to be sticking your head in there anyway, right? So that's that one. And then the baggage one, which is fun. And by then, maybe the fuel truck will be here. So the baggage one looks like this. Um, let's see. Catering, baggage service. Orlando ground, 9555. Could you please send the baggages? Now, this is where our floating woman... And again, notice that the door gets open for you. You don't get any choice over this. Um, I, you know, looking inside here, looking inside the actual cargo bay, I, I'm surprised to see a door there. Like, I, I would have thought this went back a lot further uh, than it does. Also, when you're in this camera view, by the way, there's only so many things that it models. Like, it models the whole um, gear storage bays and it models the storage and stuff. Like, this is just the way it actually works. Because it doesn't draw stuff it doesn't need to. So, for example, I can't jump inside the aircraft when I'm on the drone camera because the drone's not meant to go in, though, right? Anyway, this... So what happens is, this comes up here, and a little truck with the floating woman on it comes... Oh, there's a fuel truck, though. Drives over... And disappoint, slightly disappointingly, I know I'm complaining about stuff that's completely free and built into the game, but disappointingly, she doesn't actually get off the invisible car and sort of throw things onto the conveyor belt, which I would have really liked to have seen. Instead, what happens is they just kind of teleport their way onto the ramp, and then when they get up here, they just teleport magically inside of the storage so that's a little bit disappointing anyway so here comes the world's most careful fuel truck delivery driver you have never seen anybody as drive as carefully as this guy i'm not joking right so what happens is he kind of slowly approaches the rear of the aircraft and then he takes his time then he drives over here and then he's going to park, sort of put himself under the wing, and he's going to very, very carefully maneuver himself into position. It is fun, I gotta admit. But this last bit here, he seems to take a, a ridiculous amount of time to just line himself up. Yep. Gotta be on the exact centimeter. A little bit more. Little bit more. <laughs> I hope they tuned this. I did warn you. Is he there? I think he might be there. There you go. So it automatically uh, connects the hose and then it automatically pulls up the fuel display. Now, this is the bit I don't get because I can actually do this anytime. Right, I can actually fuel my plane anytime just by sliding this. It'll just do it. The fact that it pops this up means I can now choose my fuel, but I also choose my payload. And my payload is kind of related to the boarding of passengers and baggage, so why do I get to pick it here? So it's a bit weird, because when you actually do this, 
what should really happen now is you know fuel starts to flow and you can see it on board the aircraft and it takes its time but that actually what happens is it just instantly teleports the fuel on board instantly puts the passengers and baggage weight on board and off he goes so that you know that needs some work before it's um i would say working properly in quotes but yeah i mean it's kind of fun you can do the reverse obviously when you sort of land and taxi in and you can request deboarding if you like attach the jetway and just make things look proper and finish things off so yeah once you've done all of that um request power supply in request baggage service in so he's already finished anyway but if we choose that Orlando ground 95.55 I am done with the baggage service notice there's no option to board the passengers I assume they're going to add one because although I've connected the jetway that doesn't mean I want the passengers does it well maybe it does in this game but anyway jetway disconnect Orlando ground 95.55 could you please disconnect the jetway from the aircraft now, I'm going to show you something which I don't think should happen, personally, but you'll, you know, we'll see what you think. So, everybody, you know, obviously, I think everybody should disappear at this point. These guys should just drive off once they've done their job. The fuel truck tends to do that, but the others don't, so that's one thing. Anyway, the jetway is now disconnected. Everybody's just staying in their current positions. And what we'll do is we'll start up, we'll put the beacon put the beacon light on misclicked and we'll fire up the APU which I'm sure you know is the auxiliary power unit which is a small engine at the back which gives us our own power and fires up the main engine now this is the exhaust port for it here the actual engine is just under that tail section there so I fire up the APU which in theory should allow me to disconnect the ground power and we're running on our own power then, without even without the main engines. But something interesting happens, I think, as we'll see in a second once this thing's finished powering up. And it's something Orlando I thought I was going mad. There you go. I thought I was going mad when this first happened. Because I didn't request pushback. <laughs> I didn't request it at all. Look, the ground power unit's disconnected automatically. The pushback truck is moving into position, and he is going to start pushing us back. So I don't like that, personally. I think there should be another option to request pushback. I don't think this should ever happen. But, you know, we'll roll with it. We'll put the APU bleeds on. Obviously, we're off ground power now. There we go. And we are now being pushed back is something I didn't want to happen so what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly stop it so request pushback stop Orlando ground 9555 requesting the end of pushback 9555 request to end pushback received now I want to show you how it should work so what should actually happen I think is something like this we should choose pushback so we say request pushback Orlando ground 9555 requesting pushback this guy should then move in, he should connect, and then he should say to us, I think he should say to us, disconnect the parking brake. That's what he should say. But he doesn't, so we'll just turn the parking brake off, and we shall fire up one of the engines, and while that happens, we'll go to external camera, because I want to show you what you can do. So, from the um, ATC menu, or by the way, by default it's the scroll lock key. Uh, if you just want to press the scroll lock key, it should bring it up. It's not doing that. Um, so what you can do is you can push back to the steer to the left like that. Orlando ground 9555 requesting push back to, to steer the aircraft to the left. 9555, your request has been transmitted to the operator. <laughs> and we can request him to push us straight. Orlando ground 9555 <laughs> requesting push back to, to push the aircraft straight. I don't really like this. Because there's a delay between what your request is and when he actually does it, and it's a bit annoying. Anyway, it is what it is, so we're requesting to stop. Orlando ground 9555 requesting the end of pushback. It's a little bit aggressive, this dude. And again, you know, he should sort of say stuff like bypass pin, blah blah blah, set parking brake. He should give us instructions. It's a two-way thing. 
Well, it gets us into position. It gets us uh, an engine started, and then obviously we'd start up the uh, other engine. And if we actually quickly have a look around, we'll see, as I say, the fuel back truck, fuel truck, I think is there. I think he's on his way back to the other side of the airfield. Now, if we were on a different airfield, obviously he wouldn't take as long to get over here. Uh, but it's something to bear in mind when you're actually Orlando flying. Ground, it might take a long time to get here. Request taxi for takeoff, departing straight out. Now, again, notice what just happened. So what's happened there is he's actually... Taxi to and hold short runway 18 left using taxiway Charlie 1 Juliet Charlie Bravo 2 Bravo Bravo 19555. He's actually requested taxi. Now this could be, this could be because in the assistance, if you go to piloting, I have delegate ATC to AI. Um, it says not the co-pilot may not always be able to anticipate the intentions in order to make the correct request with ATC if you're, if you're uh, attempt to land on the unscheduled airport, blah, 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 blah. So what that's saying is, um, I have delegated ATC to the AI, which means when ATC contacts us, the AI first officer will respond and change our radio frequencies automatically and do all that kind of thing. It may well be him that is requesting the pushback and requesting taxi and all this kind of thing. He's making assumptions based on what the engine status is, I think. Uh, so what we'll do is, in the next one, when I try in a in the citation, we'll turn him off and see what happens. But anyway, while we're here, um, actually no, that I think we'll we'll basically leave it there for the uh, bus, and the next bit I'll show you when we're in the citation. Okay, welcome back. We are now in a citation CJ4, and we're at Kissimmee Airfield, which is just south of uh, Orlando. I've actually landed here in real life as well as Orlando, actually. Um, yeah, so what I want to do is turn off the assistance thing, and we'll see if that makes any difference. So we'll go to off, delegate ATC to AI. So now we will have to deal with um, everything related to ATC communications. Um, you'll notice a couple of things. Obviously, we're at the GA sort of ramp, so we've got a completely different thing here. We've got a guy over here. We've got a... Uh, a pushback guy over here. You'll notice some different options when we go through this, but same thing, you can't do anything unless you get the electrical systems on the line. Let's see if we can do that. Um, so if I remember how to do this, we go with battery master switch, which is that one there. And you still can't do it, look, because you actually have to have the avionics turned on as well. So once the avionics are turned on, at that point you get ATC comms, so we'll just pop the external camera and go with ATC. There we go. So now we've got some um, request taxi options. We can request the ATIS, ground services, uh, taxi to park and a few other options. This is obviously, you know, when we're coming inbound. So ground services, request pushback and fuel supply. They're the only options we actually have now. Um, if we request fuel supply... Kissimmee ground 9555, could you please send a fuel truck? 9555, a fuel truck is on the road. Okay, so again, we don't really know where he's going to come from in this airfield, but hopefully Kissimmee is not as big. See if we can spot the guy anywhere. We don't see him at the moment. Now, Kissimmee is one of the default airfields, so don't expect any uh, handcrafted goodness. Also, there's a few scenery bugs there, look. Little tessellations. There shouldn't be the... It looks like somebody's taking off. Um, yeah, so I can't spot the guy. Oh, here he is. Here he is. So, um, a couple of things. First of all, obviously he's got it a lot quicker. Secondly, I notice when he's fueling uh, the GA uh, planes, he don't, even though the fuel tank connect is here, what will happen is he'll pull up, but there's no fuel hose. He'll just mystically pull up, and then the fuel thing will appear, and we refuel. So we'll wait for him to get here. It's kind of cool having uh, AI planes just doing the thing. Actually makes it feel like you're on a real airfield. So, so far, what's happened is he's driven in here, he's gone in here, he turned around, then he's drove over there, and now I think he's stuck again. So, I don't, I don't really know what he's doing. So, anyway, what we'll do is we'll carry on. 
what we need to do is go to here and we'll start some engines up. We'll put the beacon lights on. We shall tell him not to bother. Kissimmee ground nutty 555. I am done with fuel services. Okay. And we shall start engine one. So we are looking for N2 of about 20 before we throw the fuel in. There's 19, 20, we open this cover, like that one, and then obviously monitor ITT, we're not going to get any problems, all the failures and stuff are turned off, so it should just fire, fire up fine. Yeah. So current, like the current state of the game is that, like the avionics on board the... Um, the jets and stuff, like, you know, the G1000s, G3000s, all the avionics on the Airbus, all that kind of thing. They're all in, like, a sort of fairly rude, sort of not basic, rudimentary, like a basic level, I guess. Um, and there are some issues with, like, you know, VNAV and that kind of thing. Uh, obviously, it is the preview build. But again, you know, you can't expect them to just implement this stuff in glorious detail. Because that's just not what they're going to do. Like, they give you planes to give you a flavour of things. I have to say that the VFR aircraft are fantastically done. All the VFR stuff's been brilliant. What's difficult, and obviously, you know, it's all, all the onboard avionics. Like, this kind of stuff takes a crazy amount of work to do. And that's why they're only ever going to give us a fairly basic um, version of it, I think. But at least, you know, when it's out, it should all be just working in some sense. Um, so what I want to do now is just show you something, which is the taxi out procedure. So what we can do is we can go here and we will request pushback. Kissimmee ground, Nutty 555 requesting pushback. Now notice the way nutty they... Five, 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 pushback request accepted. The pushback wasn't requested until I said it. So I think it was the AI that does it. So if you delegate the ATC comms to AI, then I think he's going to go at his pace, not yours. Anyway, so the pushback dude appears over here. And you don't really get many options, it seems. Now, with the VFR type stuff, like little planes like the Robins. Hang on. That's a parking brake. He basically just pushes us back. Like, there's no option to go left, go right. If I put the rudder pedal down, like, nothing's happening. With the robins and things, when I when I was being pushed back, if I moved the rudder pedals, it would steer me left and right. Um, but not the case with this guy, and I think he's probably going to push us all the way. Let's just. Oh no, there the were the options left and right. My mistake. The end of Dude, stop! <laughs> okay, so that's my mistake. No, you can actually. I'm sure when I tested this the first time, I didn't get a left and right option. Um, but yeah, it looks like we do get a left and right option, but I'm pretty certain with the Robin that didn't happen. Um, anyway, so go back to clearance. So he's left us alone, and what we can do now is we can uh, we can do whatever we want. We can say taxi depart to the south. Kissimmee ground ninety five 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 with Yankee request taxi for takeoff departure to the south. Okay, so the thing is about this is if you don't have if you don't have any charts available, there's there's a couple of options. So, so one, you can try and guess your way around. And some of the taxiway instructions can be complicated. This one I think is probably quite simple. One option is to press the V key and bring up the VFR map and basically work out that this is runway 15, so taxiway alpha is probably this one. Unfortunately, I can't see the, uh, you know, the details of the airport. There is another option. You can press escape, click on assistance, go to navigation aids, and then you can put on taxiway ribbon. Like that. And if we actually just quickly look out the window. Oops, thank you. Taxiway clearance. Taxi to and hold short runway 15 via taxiway alpha 9555. 
There you go. So now, once I've acknowledged my taxi, when I've got that assistant turned on, we actually get directions across the airfield all the way to the runway. It even directs us to actually destroy this guy, <laughs> which I'm not going to do. You could move out the way, bro. So, um, so yeah, you've got a couple of options there so you don't get lost around the airfield. The uh, taxiway assistance. There's even like a landing assistant as well, so that when you're coming in on the approach, it'll draw this kind of thing like boxes and stuff that will show you the glide path, um, which is great if you're learning to fly. Or maybe just you're learning a new aircraft and you're not really sure how best to handle it. It can actually draw landing boxes. I'll just take this over to the airfield and then you'll see what happens um, with regards to the ATC. There is a bit of precipitation. I've got live weather on and honestly, it's really rather cool because Orlando is a lot like this. It can be very humid. And you get this kind of random bouts of precipitation or just even heavy rain. It can honestly be blazing sunshine and then within half an hour the weather has just turned. It's it's crazy the way it works. Right, so we need to hold shore here. So notice the taxiway symbols take us to the holding point. Like that. Now if I have the AI turned on, what will happen is... He'll, he'll do the request for us. Um, but we now need to contact Tower, which will tune the radio. Uh, request takeoff clearance, VFR from Kissimmee Tower, because we are Kissimmee VFR. Kissimmee Tower, 9555, ready at runway 15, departure to the south. 9555, cleared for takeoff runway 15, south, departure approved. Acknowledge takeoff clearance. Cleared for takeoff runway 15, 9555. Now we've got landing lights on, strobes and all that good stuff. And yeah, as you can see, the lights, uh, sorry, the arrows will take us straight onto runway 15. And basically, we take off. By the way, this thing takes off like a missile. Press the wrong button for the view. I feel like I'm a bit low down though. Look at the speed of this thing. So at this point, you would basically acknowledge the frequency change, and he would hand you off. Tower 9555 frequency change. Orlando approach 9555 is type Cessna C25C, two miles southeast of Kissimmee, 1,400 feet. Request clearance to transition. Type Cessna C25C. <laughs> I don't think so. Anyway, that's enough of that. Uh, one last bit I want to show you is actually what happens when you land the aircraft and how the ATC brings you in. Right, so I'm in the Airbus and I've basically just requested a full stop landing from Orlando Tower. And I'm just going to follow a right hand pattern and land on 18 left, I think it was. And uh, yeah, we'll just, we'll just follow the landing through and see what the ATC tells us to do. Right, we've just been cleared to land, so we'll acknowledge the landing clearance. Cleared to land runway 18 left 9555. Get the gear down. Get rid of that for a second.
Okay. We are now fully configured. Wind is quite calm today. We've put it on low uh, auto brake and the flaps are down. Speed brake is armed. And the glide slope has just been captured. So we'll set our landing speed, which is going to be 145. I'm going to let it run the autopilot. It is left where it should be. That is the runway. I don't quite know why it's over here. I know we've got a right to left wind. I feel like it's slightly overcompensating, but I'm just going to roll with it and see where it goes. I might have to disconnect the autopilot right at the very end because it is now off configuration. It's on the glide slope. But it's very much horizontally wrong. I think, if I remember, I did this when I came into Cardiff, except it was too far to the left. I'm just going to cancel that. And we'll do it manually. Okay, that's a little better. Was lower than high. 60, 50, 40, 30, 20. Retard. Try it. 95.5, contact ground on 121.8. Little bit busy, bro, but yeah, okay. Versus are in. Decimal eight for nutty five five five. Request taxi to parking. Orlando ground nutty five five five. Request taxi to parking. Nutty five five five. Taxi to general aviation parking using taxiway cross runway three six <laughs> left Yankees LL Echo cross runway three six left Echo Alpha. Okay, general taxi aviation general parking. Aviation parking using taxiway cross runway three six left Yankee Zulu Echo cross runway three six left Echo Alpha ninety five five five. I'm wondering if we can select a different uh, place to go. Apparently not. J parking in an Airbus. Okay, that's not really what I wanted to show you. I want to show you what happens when you taxi into a gate, but for some reason, it's not going to let me do that. So we'll put those landing lights off. Set the strobe off. Go to taxi. Clamp the flaps. Yeah, there's no option here to do anything else now. Can't actually change that. Okay, let's see what happens when we get there. Yeah, well, it looks like we're sticking our Airbus in the middle of the GA field. We'll roll with it and see what happens. I don't know if I get a marshaller. <laughs> so what should happen is if it gives you a proper gate, it should uh, marshal you in, but obviously this is a little bit buggy at the moment. We'll see. We'll see what it does. What the heck? Like sectioned off an entire area. What is this? Oh, it's put like a... Oh, okay. It's put like a box around it. Oh, there is a... Look, there is a guy. Waving his in. Interesting. Okay, let's see how this works. If 
forgot to do the... Uh... Oh, it goes green. That's kind of cool. Forgot to put the APU on. Still waving us. Blimey. Bro, I can hardly see you now. Stop. Okay, parking brake. APU is available. Yes, 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 I know that's the end of the flight technically. Okay. Let's have a look at what options we now get on the outside. So we've now got loads of request taxi options. We've also got ground services. Request put request pushback and nothing else. So there aren't any um there aren't any deboarding options, which is interesting. It basically treats that as the end of the flight. Um, I think they'll need to change that. I think they will change that. I left my lights on, by the way. Um, but anyway, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed a little overview. So what I've shown you is how the ground handling works when you're leaving and how it handles it when you arrive. You've definitely seen some bugs, but that's to be expected. But for something that's out of the box built in, you know, you can turn on taxiway routings to steer you around. You've got built-in ATC. And um, it takes you to parking gates or ramps or whatever. Uh, it does seem to be a bit buggy, but it works. That's not bad. I, I wonder, though, if you'll be able to plug in, like, you know, GSX, whether they'll be able to replace the default handling and plug in a different one. Um, I don't know. Time will tell. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Give me a thumbs up if you did. Don't forget to subscribe for more content. And if you know anybody else that might enjoy my content, don't forget to tell them. Until the next one, take care, guys, and happy flying.